plant assassin here. Looking at a, a seasonal stream here. And what I wanted to show you today is that there's a camas growing right here. Um, I'm a little early because usually there's just thousands of plants in here. But I uh, kind of decided to drive up and take a look at the wildflowers. So, see if we can get a closer look here. So, here's some nice boggy ground. And the camas is just starting to sprout here. So, this is common camas. It has a cluster of flowers on the top. You can often tell it by the, before you even see the flowers, it has some fairly distinctive um, leaves that sprout up. And these uh, flower buds will open here. And there'll be a large number of purple flowers. Uh, you can and I'm sinking in this ground here, so that's one thing to keep in mind if you're going to try to grow camas, is that it does like a lot of water. So here's another one on the. Here's one starting to come up here without a flower head on it. Actually, you can see the once you get out here, there's this is camas here that's starting to come up. So, in this area, the Weezer Indian tribe, less than a hundred years ago, used to collect a large amount of camas. Here's one that's got some color on it. These are the flower buds, aren't even open yet, but they would come out here in these camas prairies and each family would have an allotment and often those would be uh, they'd be like rock carns or piles that would uh, mark them and we still see those out occasionally out in the different fields and in the pastures but uh, sometimes other things would mark them too, like just landmarks and trees. But they would, uh, each family would have a different section, and then the, those sections would be split up into um, smaller sections because they didn't harvest each section every year. They'd harvest it every two to four years, is my understanding. And then they would uh, burn it at other times of the year, but I was, some people are under the impression that they would dig the bulbs individually, but apparently what they would do is they would, they had uh, sticks that they would kind of cut into the ground and they would just roll the turf back and this would, like several people would do this, so they'd have a large section that they would roll back. And then the camas bulbs would be collected. And the ones that were for eating, they'd keep those. And then the smaller ones, they would distribute around in the, uh, underneath the turf. And then once they had the smaller bulbs, they would uh, go ahead and um, just roll the turf back and uh, then let that area grow for a couple years before they rotated back to it. So in these uh, these plots, like they, it's kind of odd because it wasn't agriculture like we often think of it because camas grows naturally on its own, but they they certainly made the environment better for it. 
because with the you see with this grass not all this grass is native but um, some of it's like the bulbous bluegrass that was introduced later but the burning of the grass gets rid of the competition and helps fertilize the ground for the uh, for the camas and then there's also um, a plant that's called death camas that has a um, it's got a white flower bunch and it has kind of different um, different veins on the on the stems and the leaves I mean, there we go so, I was trying to find an example but I couldn't find it so the with the death camas um, they would um, pull out the plants and pull the bulbs up and then get rid of them so uh, they wouldn't be collected accidentally during the harvesting time. So these plots were managed, but they just weren't, um, I mean, it wasn't like quite what a lot of people think of agriculture. So, but there's a lot of it out here. This is a little early in the year. The flower heads haven't even uh, opened yet in this area, so, but, just wanted to take a look at that so I'll uh, get a better video when the flowers open up later but this isn't really a plant that I've tried harvesting much I have uh, collected the seeds and uh, dispersed them more when uh, a lot of the settlers came in they used to run the pigs and the pigs would uh, dig up the camas bulbs so a lot of them um, a lot of the areas where the camas grew it was kind of depleted so but uh, a couple years ago we had a large fire and it came and burnt a lot of the grass and the pastures and the fields around here and as a matter of fact it almost got my uh, parents and grandparents house but after the fire that really improved the soil on the ground and the camas has just spread significantly since then so but anyway it's an interesting little plant this is the common camas this is different than the uh, the greater camas that I have in my other video this one's native here. The greater camas is actually native to Oregon, close by. It grows naturally about a hundred miles away from here on the other side of the Snake River. But so the camas starting to bloom in the grassland. So plant assassin here. If you found this video informative, please like and subscribe.